Good morning, everyone. This is Bishop J.T. Bumgardner welcoming you to Truth Church. At Truth Church, we love God and love people. We're so happy that you've chosen to be with us here in person and online today. Our mission here at Truth Church is to ignite truth, connect truth, and live truth. We desire to help people discover, develop, and deploy their purpose in life. So for whatever reason you're joining us today, we want to say to you, welcome home. We believe today is your day. series. Everybody enjoying it okay? We're still talking about seasons, and uh, we're going to focus in on that. So uh, if you are taking notes, please go ahead and get your phone out or your tablet or whatever. We're going to be giving out a lot of information today. I'm really excited about what God's doing here. Thank you to everyone who made it out for the leadership breakfast uh, yesterday morning. We had a great uh, a great training session yesterday morning, and um, I really felt like everybody left pretty empowered. Didn't you, Mimi? It was a good training. And um, I want to encourage you to try to get into the leadership training breakfasts. We do them once every three months, every quarter. And there is a lot of good material in those training sessions. And uh, it will not just get you uh, motivated and plugged into where we're going as a corporate entity, but it will also help you in your, in your individual call. And you'll be able to connect uh, with God on the call of God for your life. How many think that's a good idea? About three of us, okay. I know it's hard to get involved when the AC's broke, and it's cooler in the back of the building than it is up here on the platform. It's about 90 degrees, so if I'm sweating, it ain't because I'm preaching hard. Amen. So uh, we're going to pick up uh, where we left off last week. Our text is 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. 1 Chronicles chapter 12, and uh, verse 32, it says, Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. Their chiefs were 200, and all of their brethren were at their command. <clears throat> How many of you know the Bible says we can be uh, instant in season and out of season? Yeah. Right? I know sometimes it don't feel like that because we have things come at us, and it catches us off guard, and we don't think to, to respond in the spirit. We respond in the flesh. We don't really even respond in the flesh. We react in the flesh. Hmm? How many know smacking somebody upside the head ain't a response? That's a reaction. Come on, amen. You ever felt like just knocking the fool out of somebody that's acting like a fool? All right, that's a reaction. That's not a response. But God wants us to be able to respond in the spirit, amen. And he wants us to be able to do that, to be instant in season and out of season so that we respond the way he would respond, that we respond with the nature of Christ. That means that you and I can have fruit for every season of our life. No matter what's going on, no matter what season we're in, and, and, and how many know we go through different seasons of life. No matter where we find ourselves, we can still bear fruit in our lives, no matter what we're going through. And even though that we're not in the middle of a fruit-bearing season, we can still have fruit that is being shown in our life. Come on, somebody. That's what, really is, that's what it really means to have a storehouse. Right when we when we bank away the seed, when we have seed for a, a a time where we feel like we're living in a wilderness or a desert experience, that's what a storehouse is all about. So there will always be fruit in our house for every season that we're going through. We're not going to starve to death in a dry season. We're not going to go thirsty in a dry season because we got stuff put away. We we've stocked up. We got fruit. Come on, somebody, praise the Lord, Amen. Huh? How many know it's possible to know how to maintain the joy of the Lord and the presence of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit in our life, the victory of the Lord in our lives, even when we're in the middle of a planting season hmm. uh, or in a dormant season or in a growing season? You can have joy in every season of your life. 
Huh? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. So much joy you can't even put words on how much joy you got because you can't describe how good it is. It's unspeakable. It's good joy. Just joy just flows out of you. Nobody don't even know you're in a dormant season or know you're in a dark season or in a bad season because the joy of the Lord is carrying you through that season of your life. Amen. And, and, and I believe that uh, God is calling us to always walk in that place of joy where we can be replenished no matter where we find ourselves. Amen. And we can be nurtured no matter what we're walking through. The nurturing power of the Holy Ghost still comes in our life. And, 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 and no matter how hard it is, we know that God is still fertilizing our dream to bring it to fruition. And we can still maintain the life that He's called us to to get us to the victory that He's already decided for us. I mean, know God's already decided that you're victorious. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe God does that individually and He does that, that corporately. Hallelujah. Hmm? How many of you recognize uh, you don't have to get uh, mad every time you get a chance? You don't have to get depressed every time you have the opportunity to be depressed. Hmm? I, listen, how, a lot of things we deal with as human beings can be depressing. Your car can blow up next week. I mean, when the mechanic says, I can't fix it or it's $5,000, that can be depressing. Hmm? I don't care how much faith you got. I don't know how many believers I've ever seen in my life come out of a mechanic's job with a five, come out of a mechanic's garage with a five thousand dollar bill going. Whoa! Praise the Lord, five thousand dollars. Hmm? It's a little discouraging and disheartening, isn't it? Hmm? But the Lord said you can have joy even in them seasons. You can be nurtured even in that kind of season. Hmm? No matter what you're going through, how I many know we go through seasons of loss? We lose people, they die, and they go to be with Jesus, right? And we go through a terror. We have seasons in our life, and all of us will experience seasons of loss where we lose people that we love. I mean, God can carry you through a season of loss. That's why it's so cool to be a Christian when you suffer through loss, because God's got you. Come on, some of you know what I'm talking about because we've had loss this year. Terry's back from up north. Her brother, uh, he's with Jesus now. But it was instant and it was out of the blue. But how many know that's shocking to us, right? And we're glad to have you back. Amen. We none of us want to go through loss. But how many know loss is part of life? But God says, I will carry you through the loss. I can nurture you through it. I can sustain you through the pain. Hmm? That's the promise to every believer. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah right there. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hmm? I, I believe God's been speaking to some of us in here for a few weeks. And I believe there's some people in the room today. You're just one act of obedience away from your breakthrough. You're just one act of obedience away from the miracle that God wants to bring to your life. One simple act. But you have allowed the enemy to come in or the circumstances of your life to come in and beat you down. To question whether or not God is a God who is a God of miracles. I mean, if you go a few months without miracles, then sometimes it's hard to believe God's a God of miracles until you get the miracle. Hmm? Come on, amen. I mean, we have to learn how to position ourselves to be able to receive what God has for us. Because there's a miracle in your their place. We can't be distracted by the culture that we live in. We can't be distracted by war in the Middle East. We can't be distracted by politics. We can't be distracted by news pundits. We have to understand that no matter what we walk through in our life as a believer, God has a their place for us where we can be nurtured and restored and filled with joy and filled with peace and filled with His glory. Hmm? I remember, the, how many of you remember the Lord told Elijah, He said, go down to the brook. And He said, Elijah, I will feed you at the brook. He said, the ravens will feed you there. All Elijah had to do to eat was be obedient. He had to get to his, their place. One simple act of obedience when he got there, how I many know his needs were supplied? So, well, Bishop, I don't want to go down to the brook. I like it in my condo on the beach. 
Well, how many of you could starve to death? There ain't no Win Dixie at the condo. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to be down by the, by the beach. Well, how many know if the Lord said he's going to feed you down by the brook, you better get down to the brook. You ain't going to eat. Are you going to eat something that ain't going to agree with you? Come on, amen. Hmm? I'd be moving from the beach to the brook. Praise the Lord, amen. Because the Lord said, I will feed you there. Hmm? He told Elijah, I will feed you at your there place. And all Elijah had to do is one simple act of obedience if he was going to be eating lunch that day. Praise the Lord. Then after that season, God puts Elijah into another season. And he tells him to go down to a little widow's house. And he says, I'm going to feed you at the widow's house. And Elijah obeys the voice of God. And he goes to the widow's house. And how many know she ain't got nothing left to eat but one biscuit? she got one biscuit left. But Elijah told her what God said to him. He said, give me your last, little, last biscuit. Whew. Can you imagine pastor doing that today? Going in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a food shortage, going up into the neighborhood and going into an old lady's house and said, give me your last biscuit. Thus says the Lord, give me that biscuit. CNN, MSNBC, Fox News would be all there. Fat little prophet eats old lady's last biscuit. Mm. Come on now, amen. That would be the headline on the news then. Fat little, fat little bald prophet eats lady's last biscuit. Mm. How many of you really got to be obedient to God to go down there and take the last biscuit of a little widow woman and her son, when it's all they had to eat. But, uh, but, but Elijah looked at that little widow woman and he said, feed me first. And then everything you need will be supplied to you throughout the famine. Hmm? And listen to me very carefully. Watch this. He obeyed and she obeyed. In other words, he did it and then she did it. And then God did it. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. And when God did it, miracles came. Breakthrough came. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me, loved ones. I believe that we have to learn how to position ourselves in every season of our life to obey the voice of God. And we have to do it by Faith, whatever it is that he tells us to do, no matter how extraordinary, no matter how outlandish, no matter how much it does not make sense, we have to learn to obey the voice of God. The natural parameters of the economy of the United States of America, the social parameters of the, of the culture that we live in in the United States of America are not godly parameters. They're not his economic parameters. If God wants to give you a million dollars, I don't care what the bank says. I don't care what the IRS says. God will do it. If he said do it, you just got to be obedient to what he said. Amen. Mm. I don't care how many times you've been turned down for a loan. God writes you a check. Can I help you? His checks don't bounce. We need to position ourselves for the breakthrough and be obedient. Now, I understand we live in a natural world with natural law. We try to follow the law. But God's law supersedes natural law. Never be willing to discount the avenue of a miracle because of the parameters of the culture. Never. Hmm? Come on, somebody. How, how, how many know God don't have to obey the law of gravity? Jesus says one day, I feel like walking. Oh, there's a lake. Who cares? Hmm? Natural law don't apply. I mean, we live in natural law. We are bound by natural law as living human beings. But if God wants to do a miracle, he can violate natural law. We've seen dead people get up. We've seen cancers be healed. We've seen tumors dry up. We send people with a death sentence from a surgeon and a doctor get up off the bed and go out and preach the gospel. 
Because God is not confined to natural law. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Two things I want to tell you about the sons of Issachar. We're going to keep on moving. Number one, they understood the times and the seasons. They were able to discern the season that they lived in. Amen. They had the ability to discern what was going on in their surroundings without it being dictated to them through another voice. You need to be careful watching the news. Because the people you are watching on the news do not have the Holy Spirit. They can only give you the news based on a cultural, factual testimony. They cannot give you the news based on a spiritual, miracle-working God's testimony. Hmm? So they will factually make statements on the news that are factually true, but they're not spiritually true. Because God supersedes the natural. So you got to be careful what you allow to come in. I mean, God's bigger than what's happening in the Middle East. You don't believe me, just read the book. It's in the book. He's bigger. Somebody shout, he's bigger. But we have to be able to discern the season and the time of what's going on so we know how to respond to the season and the time and what's going on. So that we know how to respond the way Jesus would respond. Amen? In other words, we can't be oblivious to what's going on around us. We need to know earthly cultural facts, and we need to know the spiritual facts, how they pertain to those cultural facts. Hmm? That's who we are. We're the children of God. We're the children of the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Number two, not only did they know what was going on, they knew what to do. Somebody say they knew what to do. They knew what to do. They had a knowledge of how to navigate the seasons and the times that they lived in. They knew what was up and they knew how to respond to what was up. They had a revelation and a knowledge that, needed, that, 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 that they had that they knew what to do in every season of their life. Come on, amen? Huh? Amen. How many know God knows what to do in every situation of your life? You may not know what to do, but he knows what to do, amen? amen. He knows how to get your marriage healed. He knows how to get your business prosper. He knows how to make your career take off. He knows how to take care of your kids. He knows what you should be eating for dinner. He knows everything about you. Come on, praise the Lord, amen? He knows how to make your business prosper. He knows how to get you a promotion at work. He knows how to get your enemies to shut up and be quiet. Come on, praise the Lord, amen? He knows how to get you a raise. He knows how to get you in the right relationship. He knows how to get you a new car if you need a new car. How many know God knows all those things because he's God? He knows, praise the Lord. So you and I have to understand the times, and then we have to have the knowledge of what we should do. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18 says this, that the, God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom. Somebody shout wisdom. And revelation, shout revelation. In the knowledge, somebody shout knowledge, of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. In other words, that God would grant unto you as a believer that you would know God and how he operates in our life. That we could have an expectation by his spirit to know what to do, how to do, and when to do. Hmm? Half the Christians, they don't even know when God's speaking to them. Come on, amen. We think it's somebody else speaking to us. We think it's bad mushrooms on a pizza. that well it might be the holy ghost huh maybe you ought to get up off the couch and take a walk and see if god got something to say to you praise the lord amen hmm? he god wants us to have visions he wants us to have revelation about the times and the seasons that we live in amen Divine appointments, the divine visitation divine vision for our life that's not some earthly plan not some earthly vision. Most people today have an earthly vision of what their life is going to be like. Well, I need to work really hard. I need to have a good career. I need to put some money away. I need to save some money. I need to retire and enjoy the rest of my life until they drop me in the ground. That's not God's plan. That is a socio-economic plan in this world to get us ready for death. But God don't want you to be ready for death. He wants you to be ready for life. 
You're going to live forever, baby. Stop planning the end of your life and start planning your eternity. It'll change the way you move and live and have your being in this world. Praise the Lord. Hmm? Come on, somebody. It's very important. Divine timing is as important as divine vision. Having a divine vision. Hmm? How many of you recognize today that God's kingdom operates on a divine order? Everybody say divine order. Uh, come on, come on. That means, hold on to your seat real quick. Come on. God will not violate or oppose his order to meet your urgency. Hmm? He won't oppose his order to meet your urgency. Hmm? How, how many of you ever prayed and told God how urgent your need was? Hmm? And found out that God ain't going to violate his time. Hmm? He ain't going to violate his seasons uh, in order to meet the urgency of your need. He will not oppose the order of things that he put in place. He has set an order in his kingdom. And he said it will be line upon line. It will be precept upon precept. Huh? I won't put a roof on a house until the foundation is laid first. We're going to put a foundation. We're going to put the plumbing in the ground. We're going to build the walls. We're going to build the inside of the plate. We're going to put a roof on it then. Hmm? But God ain't going to put a roof on until the foundation is done. Come on, somebody. Help me. Amen. Hmm? And God will never violate his divine order to please men. That's why you and I have to understand the seasons, God's seasons, and God's times. Huh? And then have a vision or a revelation about what it is we're supposed to do in these seasons and times. You need a vision for your life. Amen. Huh? We have to know what to do. Somebody say what to do. And when to do. Hmm? Because, if you, because if you know what to do, but don't know when to do, you still end up frustrated. A lot of people know what to do, they just don't know when, it, when to do it. Sometimes we go early, sometimes we go late. And either one is a big mistake. That's why you got to be able to discern. Huh? If, you, if you're just always trying to do something and don't know what to do, you're frustrated that way also. Hallelujah. Come on, amen. Hmm? So we have to know what and we have to know when. Everybody say what? Everybody say when. Hmm? Anybody here ever got ahead of God on anything? Hmm? And, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have the ability to hear God. We all can hear God. It's just that you didn't understand what season you were supposed to do it in. Huh? You got a revelation, you got a vision for your life, you know what God wants to do with you, you just didn't understand the timing and you didn't understand the season of what it was. You didn't understand when it was going to be released in your life. You didn't understand when God wanted to bring it to fruition and you got ahead of God and tried to make something happen and you ended up aborting God's plan for your life and made a big mess out of it, made a bunch of enemies instead of friends. Hmm? And now instead of being surrounded with people that are trying to help you in your vision, you got a lot of people out there talking about you going, they done lost their mind. I don't know who they think they are. Hmm? Come on, how many know what I'm talking about? Amen. Hmm? And so what happens is when we do that, God sends you back around the mountain again. You have 30 theology degrees going around the same mountain you was going around when you was 20, if you ain't careful. And know everything there is to know about what you're doing in your mountain. You can describe the landscape. Oh, yeah, up around this next corner is a sycamore tree. It's just beautiful. It's about to come into the season of its flower. You know everything about that mountain because you've been around it so many times. Hmm? Somebody say there's a time for everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh. Come on, somebody. A time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, a time of peace. Hmm? Hallelujah. What profit has the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Hmm? One translation says it's appropriate. Appropriate time. 
Huh? He's got time for everything. Get you into the right place at the right time. Somebody say right time. He's put eternity in our hearts. Huh? Somebody say eternity is in my heart. But nobody can figure out the work from the beginning to the end. Because God is the one that is the author of the beginning and the end. And guess what? He makes everything beautiful in his time. Everything wonderful in his time. Wonderful, wonderful, powerful, powerful, beautiful, beautiful. In its right time. Huh? That's why we look at somebody that's 14 years old and say, it's not the right time for you to get married right now. You're only 14. Stop that foolishness. No, I'm in love. I'm in love. My soulmate, shut up. You don't even know what a soul is. How are you going to have a soulmate? Hmm? How do you know a 14-year-old can have a child? Isn't that right? A 14-year-old can have a child, but when a 14-year-old does have a child, what do we say? Most people say, well, that's certainly not the right time. That's not the right time for them to, to, to have a child. You know, and so what happens is, is a 14-year-old has a child, then we all got to surround that 14-year-old. We got to help the 14-year-old that's going to be dependent on the grandmother and the grandfather to help the 14-year-old that has a new baby that really don't know how to take care of a new baby, but they're getting a good lesson right now. Come on, amen. They're going to need a lot of help. Somebody said they're going to need a lot of help. So if a 14-year-old has a baby, we say, well, it's not a good time. But if they're 23 or 24 years old and they, they've gone through a proper relationship and they, they've done everything right before God, now all of a sudden we're having a baby shower. And we're celebrating. Hmm? We're throwing a party because, oh, it's going to be a baby. <laughs> oh. Right? We're all happy about the new baby. Hmm? You deserve it. You deserve it. Right? Everybody's all excited about having to, that's beautiful, that's wonderful. We're so happy for them because everything is beautiful and appropriate in its right time. Right? Come on, amen. Ecclesiastes 8.5 says, He who keeps his command will experience nothing harmful, and a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. Hmm? One, 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 one translation says, Proceed, time and procedure. Everybody say time and procedure. In other words, when and what? When and what? Everybody say when and what? Uh, the proper times and the proper procedures for everything in your life, there is a season. There's a season for your vision. There's a season for your dreams. There's a season for your aspirations. There's a season for everything, for your business, for your career, for your life, for your children. There's a season that God has its right time for. Come on, hallelujah. Hmm? You know what will happen if you don't understand the times and the seasons for your life? Number one, you'll be mad at God. You'll be upset at God. I'm just mad at the Lord. I've been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. It still hasn't come to pass. I'm just upset with the Lord. Huh? How many of you ever been mad at God because you've been believing for something and it did not go the way you thought it was going to go? You got a vision for your life, and it didn't manifest the way you thought it was going to manifest, or the way the prophet said, you come up to the altar of true church, and the prophet said, thus saith the Lord, you will be a millionaire. And then you found out you went a million dollars in debt. And then you're mad at God. Right? Come on now. Well, I planted a seed. I've been walking in faith for three weeks. I've been going to every prayer meeting. I've been calling down heaven, and nothing is happening in my life. Come on, somebody. Amen. I've been going to early morning prayer meetings, been calling on heaven, and I don't feel any different. Huh? Hmm. Uh, come on, praise the Lord. Come on, some of y'all, y'all don't have to admit it. It's okay. Huh? You can keep sitting out there like you got it all together. I know better. Hmm. But I promise you, everybody in this room has had a time when things didn't go the way they wanted and they were upset with God. Uh, and that comes because we don't understand the times and the seasons. We get mad at God, and, and we get upset with the way things are. And, 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 and when you get, how many know when you get mad at God, you get aggravated at everybody else? When you get mad at God, even the people you love the most, you're mad at. Hmm? How you doing today, honey? Shut up! Hmm? Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You're mad at everybody. So you tell everybody you got the joy of the Lord. You look like you done run over a cat. Hmm? 
Y'all looking at me like I ain't telling the truth. Y'all know this is truth, church. Hmm? No? Everybody, when you're mad at God, everybody irritates you. When you don't understand what's going on in your life, you're irritated at everybody that does understand what's going on in their life. Hmm? And you wonder, why do they get it, but I don't? Come on now. Huh? Why? Because you have not understand. You have not understood the times and the seasons of your life. Why am I in this place? Why am I going through everything that I'm going through? Why isn't anything coming together for me? I don't understand nothing. God said he was going to do this. God said he was going to do that. I, I, just, I just think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back home, put my feet up, and just watch Joe Osteen on TV every day. I'm just going to have church in my lazy boy where I can't be offended. I promise you, if you're that upset, you're going to get offended at Joe Osteen too. Hmm? You'll start judging him by episode three. Have my best life right now. <laughs> Who's he kidding? Right? Come on now. Praise the Lord. And it, all it is, we don't understand the times and the, and the seasons. Secondly, we won't just get mad at God, but we won't allow God to complete the process. We won't let him do it. Because of frustration, we never allow God to, to, to process us into what he wants. Huh? Listen to me, every season of your life has a purpose. Every, I'm going to try it again. Every season of your life has a purpose. Every season in the natural world also has a purpose. Huh? There's a season when the ground replenishes itself, a season to plant, a season to grow, a season to harvest. Huh? How many understand in life we have seasons? Uh, and, so, and so because we don't understand often what we're going through, we don't often understand the times and the seasons of our life, we don't ever allow God to process us through the season because we're upset and it ain't going the way we thought it was going to go. So we just boycott the season that we're in and chalk it up to a loss. When God is saying, no, stay in the season, I'm processing you. I'm processing you. I want to do something in you. And you know what? When we boycott this thing, we never get ready for the next season of our life. We're never prepared for where he's taken us. We get our day of opportunity for the next season of our life, and we're not able to step into the new opportunity for the next season of our life because we haven't been prepared for the next season of our life. We didn't get equipped where we were at or processed where we were at in the day of our processing. Hmm? Everybody all right? Still with me? Y'all staying up okay, right? I'm not talking over nobody's head. This is easy stuff, right? It's easy stuff. Come on. Hmm? You don't just show up on your day of opportunity and your day of breakthrough and your day for God to use you and not have let God deal with your heart before you got there. He's got to deal with you. Hmm? God's not going to save you and promote you to the front line just because you got saved, it don't work that way. Come on now. Hmm? See, everything God brings us through in our life, everything that we go through in our life, he, he wants to put a little bit more equipment in us. He wants to equip us a little bit more. He wants to, to work through our sorrow and work through our pain and work through our loss and work through the subtraction and work through the misunderstanding to process us and equip us for our tomorrow. It's not that he abandoned us. It's that he's teaching us something through it. But we give up. We get hurt. And we can't make the comeback and understand that really God's been there all the while processing us because he's trying to get something burned out of us that will hinder us in our next season. Hmm. And so the things that we're purposed for for our life, we don't never really step into the fullness of that with the anointing of what he has for us because we don't understand the why and the when of our life. Huh? I believe God's been working in my life since I was a child, since I was a little kid. I, I can tell you all the bad things I did, but God still works through all the bad things I did. I can tell you all the times I was laid out. I can tell you all the times I was injured. I can tell you all, this, all the times that my life was threatened and the crazy stuff I did. I can tell you about being in the Persian Gulf and being in conflict and being in war. I can tell you all those things. But I know that in every season of my life, God was processing me for my tomorrow. Come on, amen. Hmm? 
And I was sitting around with Kim talking the other day. We were talking about what was going on in the Middle East. And I was saying, you know, this day of this day of fear, this day of retribution from Hamas. I think we should keep Jesse home from school. And she was like, well, maybe. And I was like, well, maybe it's just me because I spent time in the Middle East. And, you know, and I was in a conflict with these people that have these terrorist tendencies. Maybe I'm just over alert. And I was wrestling in my mind whether or not we should keep her home or let her go to school or keep her home or let her go to school. And, you know, we let her go to school. But, you know, it took me a while. She went late because I took her late. And then I realized that the security down at the school was very aware. And they put an extra security guard on. And they had a Port St. Lucie policeman down there and another one undercover. They were already on it. And it made me feel better. Right? But I knew that that time in the Gulf processed me in a different way to see the world in a different way that most people that have never been in combat could never understand. Right? And so God takes the events of our life and He processes us for our future. Huh? Come on, praise the Lord. Some of you are going through some stuff right now and you wonder why God's got you at this stage of your life. And, and it's because he's, he's putting another piece of equipment in your life to take you to your tomorrow so you can inhabit the promise of your life. So that the vision and the dream that he gave you years ago can come to fruition. God's not abandoning you when it feels like you've been abandoned. He's processing you so that you can step into what it is that he has for you and occupy and possess the promise promise of your life. That's really what's taking place. God's not given up on us. He's not quit on us. He's pulling for us. You're not in a boxing ring boxing God. You're in the ring of life and God is in the corner holding a spit bucket, yelling behind you, you got this. I'm with you. I'll never leave you. Knock the fool out of the devil. Telling you how to move and how to have your being and how to live in the overflow and how to overcome and stay in victory. That's what your father does. He's not the reason you have not lived your vision. He's the reason you still have one. You are all purposed. We are all purposed in the days moving forward. And there's always an assignment on your life. Every single day you have an assignment by God in your life. You don't just arrive. You're always arriving at the next moment, the next day of blessed destiny for your life. And every destination that you step into, he is equipping you for that destination. Why? Because we are people of destiny. You are a person of destiny. He did not make a mistake when he called you. He didn't mess up. He didn't second guess your existence. He called you to be a person of destiny. And if we get frustrated and upset at God and we don't allow him to process us and equip us for what it is that we'll need in that day of divine appointment, we can boycott the plan of God for our life. And we go around the mountain again. Hmm. How many of you recognize this morning that your biggest enemy is not the devil? Your biggest enemy stares back at you every morning in the mirror. You are your own worst critic. Come on, somebody. Your biggest enemy shaves its face or straightens its hair every morning in the mirror. We wrestle with ourselves. We wrestle with our insecurities. We wrestle with our rejections. That's not the devil. That's the fear of the unknown and the inadequacy that comes with the human life. And it's why God calls us to a higher calling to trust him in the face of no matter what we will stand against. Paul said, I've come to the point where I said I've got to deal with myself every day. I've got to deal with myself. I've got to die to myself and get resurrected before I head out the door. 
Mm. So God has to process us. He has to deal with our attitudes and habits. Deal with our language. And I'm not talking about them nasty four-letter words. I'm talking about them horrible four-letter words. Like can't and won't. Come on, somebody. We stand up and declare, I can't in the face of a God who said you can. Those four little words will kill you. Hmm? Because we serve the God of possibilities. And all things are possible to him that believe. Hmm. And he puts another piece of equipment on our life in this season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, well, why? Why does God put this equipment on us when I don't understand? You know, God, for the very beginning, has been trying to get us to understand what the plan is. Come on, amen. Do you know how hard it is for an infinite God to try to explain the plan of the ages to finite people? I mean, it takes us 12 or 14 years just to learn how to do math and read. How are we going to understand everything in the universe? Come on, somebody, amen. Hmm? Come on, praise the Lord. How does an infinite God make himself known to a finite people? Come on. Hmm? That's the reason when God talked to Abraham, he said, Abraham, I've been trying to tell you about the plan of the ages. Abraham, I want you to know what I'm like. I want you to know me, Abraham. I want you to know my intentions, Abraham. I want you to know my thoughts, Abraham. I want you to know how I live and how I move and how I love. I want you to understand me, Abraham. Hmm? But I've come to realize, Abraham, my ways are so far beyond your ways and my thoughts are so far beyond your thoughts. I just got to bring you up into my world or get down into your world. And we just got to process you. A little bit where you can even begin to think and understand what I'm trying to tell you, Abraham. Where you can begin to think and understand what it is like to understand me. To know what I'm like. And so sometimes God has to put us in the middle of a season just to get us to understand what he wants us to do. Is everybody all right? Hmm. How, how many of you remember the Bible declares in Genesis and in Hebrews and in the Gospels that God tried to explain to Abraham the plan of the ages? Come on, help me please, Mimi. God tries to explain to Abraham the plan of the ages, this infinite, all-knowing, all-powerful creator of the heavens and earth who does miracles is trying to explain to a limited man who has finite understanding the plan of the ages. And so the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are in heaven. And, and I just imagine they're kind of having some kind of a meeting. And, and, and they're having communion with Abraham. And God said to Abraham, you are my friend. Hmm. I want to expose you, expose you to the plan of the ages. And he begins to roll out the blueprints for Abraham to see. He lays it out on a table in front of Abraham. He said, this is my plan and the blueprint, blueprints for you to spend eternity with me, to have eternal life. And he said, Abraham, I want you to understand, this is what has got to happen. I'm going to have a son. He's going to be my only son. He's going to come. He's going to be born into the world. It's going to be me coming down to earth so that you can see and understand. And he is going to die. That's what's going to happen. Abraham, Abraham said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't understand, God. You're God. You're way up in heaven. And you're going to have a son. I didn't even know you had a wife. This don't, don't make no sense to me. And God said, let me tell it to you again, Abraham. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. I'm going to say it a little bit slower this time. I'm going to have a son. He's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. He's going to be born. He's going to live a life. And he's going to die. Abraham said, no, this don't make no sense. What do you mean? 
You're going to send your son down from heaven. This don't make no sense. He's going to be born. And he's going to die. He's going to die for me. Why is he going to die? This don't make no sense. I don't understand. And God said, Abraham, pay attention. This is my plan for all the ages. I'm sending my son. He's going to die for the sin of the world. He's going to pay the price for you to make it back in. Friends, I don't get it. Your ways are beyond my ways. Your thoughts are beyond my thoughts. I don't understand. And God said, never mind, never mind, never mind. And he rolled up the blueprints. And he put them away. And he said, Abraham, take your son. Your only son. Go up the mountain and build an altar. And put him on the altar and sacrifice him. And Abraham said, I don't understand, but I'm going to obey. And he goes up the mountain and he takes Isaac. And they build an altar and he lays him on the altar. The Bible says, as Abraham draws back with a knife to sacrifice Isaac, that the angel of the Lord appeared and said, stop. And Abraham stopped. And a ram that had worked his way up the other side of the mountain was caught in the thicket. Not caught in the altar, but caught in the thicket next to the altar. I don't know about you, but I ain't never, I've been watching nature shows my whole life. I ain't never seen a ram caught in any thicket. But there was a ram caught in the thicket. And Abraham said, oh, I understand now. I understand. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You've made a way for me. You've made a way for all of mankind. That's the plan of the ages. I get it now. Come on, stand to your feet all over the room. Listen to me very carefully, very, very carefully. God has a plan for every season of your life. Every season. We don't always understand it. It don't always make sense. He might tell us to do something we ain't never heard of that's crazy. But he just is looking for one simple act of obedience. So we can move into the next season. If you would, just bow your heads with me this morning. Father God, right now. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. We know your ways are beyond our ways. We know your understanding is beyond our understanding. But you have put in us the ability to understand the times and the seasons by the power of your spirit. So Father, we will not default to our human understanding. We will have the revelation of a miracle working supernatural God in our life and we will trust you in the season of our life to carry us to the next season. Come on, just say this with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for equipping me for the season of my life. And the next season of my life. I trust you completely. I may not understand it all. I may not get it all. But I understand the season and the time that you've called me to. And I will trust you in that. My life, my times, and my seasons are in your hands. And my life is yours. Take me and use me today. 
for your glory. My life is yours. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for changing me. Thank you for making me whole. Thank you for illuminating my path. I trust you. I trust you today, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, if you believe that and pray that, give the Lord a big round of applause today. We serve a miracle working God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, before you go, if, um, if you've been coming for a while and you haven't had a chance to visit the green room or it's your first time here, please come back and join me in the green room. we got some snacks back there. I'd like to get to know you a little bit, give you my phone number, and uh, put some stuff in your hands. Otherwise, you guys have a very blessed day in the Lord. We love you here at Truth Church, and uh, we're just grateful that you're here. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Sometimes you've got to dance through the darkness, sing through the fire. Praise when it don't make sense. Sometimes you've got to stare down the giants. Worship from the lion's den. Sometimes you've got to shout it from the mountains. Louder in the valley. Trusting that it'll get you there. Sometimes you've got to welcome the wonder. Wait for the word.